Hey, one of these plants is super scary and deadly, and the other is very, very useful and even food. If you can't tell the difference, you should definitely watch this video. Stay tuned. Joel here from American Survival Co. And this is a very, very useful video, especially if you're just getting into foraging. Now, foraging can be overwhelming, especially to the beginner. And one set of plants that always cause a lot of fear and anxiety and maybe even turn people away from foraging as a whole is water hemlock. Now, a lot of people just getting into foraging and wild edibles, they hear about, you know, the, this horrible plant called water hemlock, and it is. It's very deadly. It's something that can literally kill you um, and then there's a lot of concern with well I heard it looks like elderberry and things like that and then people that have been foraging for a while tend to forget why anyone would ever confuse the two um, and now it's very important not to but come with me and we're gonna take a closer look at these plants I actually have an elderberry behind me so this is one we're gonna spend a little bit of time on it's not the best example but it's one that still has some blooms on it and I think we can get the point across here. But from far away, both of these plants like kind of the same environment. They like to have wet feet and they can even be growing right next to each other. But as we come in closer here, let's look at the blooms themselves. Now it is a compound umbel, but even from far away, you can discern a different shape to it. Here, the elderberry, it has more of a flatter shape, whereas the water hemlock is kind of more sporadic and explosive looking to me, like fireworks. If we look at the bark, we can see the lenticels, whereas the water hemlock, it has striations and purple colors to it. You can tell it's not like a woody material. As it ages, it can seem woody, but it's a weed, whereas this is a bush, or a shrub, whatever you want to call it. So if we take a look closer at the leaves themselves, they have toothy margins, just like water hemlock. But in the side-by-side -side comparison, if I flip these over, you should be able to see that the leaf veins on the water hemlock are a lot more pronounced. A really awesome foraging instructor named Green Dean has a great page on this. You should go check out his website, eattheweeds.com. But how he likes to describe that is water hemlock works out. And so hopefully you can see the difference there. As we continue on down the plant, Notice how the new growth is green. That's always something that piques my interest when I'm, you know, analyzing plants. A lot of useful things have that characteristic, whether it's blueberry or box elder, huckleberry, elderberry, but the new growth is green, as you can see in these leaves right here. And as we travel down the bark, here you can see some lenticels. It looks completely different than the water hemlock. And that really is your, your biggest giveaway. Even if there's no flowers, there's no berries, these are very different looking plants. And so they don't need to be as scary, but you should treat it with respect. Don't ever, ever ingest anything that you don't have a 1000% certainty of what it is. Um, and even in the case of water hemlock, if you were to play around with it and get some of the sap on your fingers and rub your eye, you can really, really get yourself in trouble. Here's a more mature plant. Let's travel down it. This is elderberry again. You see the opposite leaf arrangement, the bark, the lenticels. It's a very different looking plant and very useful. Well guys, that about wraps it up for this video. I hope you got something out of it. 
it's important not to lose that mindset of, of the beginner, especially when it comes to deadly things and especially in survival. As we kind of progress on our journey, sometimes we lose sight of, you know, that beginner's mindset where how could somebody confuse these two? They're so completely different. But if you're not used to the type of attention to detail that it takes to analyze plants and know their identities and, and use them, um, this can be a very daunting task. Like, wow, if I get this wrong, I could die. Um, and that tends to turn people away. But this is very doable, very easy. We've been doing it as a species since we've been on this earth. It's important to know plants. They're very useful. They're, they're food, they're medicine. Um, and it just unlocks a lot of interesting parts of this world that we get to enjoy. If you like learning cool stuff like this, I highly encourage you to check out americansurvivalcode.com. We have all kinds of class listings and among them are plant walks. And in my opinion, that is the quickest way to retain this information is on a boots on the ground type class. You kind of get familiar with the plants much quicker than you could from a book. I myself, any any time I have where I can go train with other foragers, like one of my favorite locally that does classes out here is Green Dean from eattheweeds.com. He's amazing. And if you can't check me out, check him out. Uh, just get out there and learn the stuff. It, it, to me, it's very enriching and, and useful knowledge, and it just breeds uh, stewardship of the land, especially for the kids and adults. It's, it's just really rewarding to get into. <laughs> and obviously it's a lot easier to eat stuff that doesn't run away from you so check it out maybe i'll see you out here and i'll catch you guys on the next video